audit output has been paid for by the WZWA Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the WZWA Network, and welcome to my review show here of XPW Broken, Beaten, Scarred from May 27th, 2023 from the Hart Ballroom in Newark, New Jersey. Shit. I drank a bottle of red wine whilst I watched this, so I apologize if I'm a little bit drunk, but this is XPW style, bitch, so let's do this. Great open to the show. Good crowd at the uh, Hart Ballroom there in New Jersey. Larry Legend enters to a pop as he should. Uh, Larry is such a step up for any company in need of a ring announcer. He's announcing and pronouncing his wordsmithing. Is second to none. Uh, first match is coming up. No, it's Rob Black. Rob Black is making his entrance to the ring, Mo fucker. And he's shaking babies and kissing hands. Great line, Ron. Love you, Nanny. Um, I feel so dumb not knowing what Desert Eagle mean, uh, means. Means. I have no idea what that means. I still have no clue. Maybe I'll have to ask somebody to explain that to me. Um, there's a sign that says Billy Corgan is pussy. Not a pussy, just is pussy. He's pussy man. He's pussy. There's a big fuck the NWA chant. Um, I didn't know what, what had happened. I found out later in the show that they had pulled Tom Latimer from the show um, for whatever reason. Bound to happen. You know, everyone's so scared, aren't they? They're so scared. Everyone's got their, their towel between their legs when it comes to XPW. The Jewish section. You should be called the Jew World Order. Get some shirts made, all right? You circumcised motherfuckers. Uh, another thing that I noticed, a few hot chicks in attendance, man. Holy shit. Most of the time when you see an XPW show, it's mostly just men, but I, from what I've realised, there were a lot of honeys at ringside. <clears throat> Here we go. Speaking of honeys, Alice Crowley and Tessa Blanchard in the opening contest that goes eight minutes and 52 seconds. This is my first time seeing Alice perform. And I'm like, oh boy, it's Tessa. Tessa's coming. All right. She's a very controversial figure in professional wrestling. This is what we've come to expect with XP Derb. Um, I find Tessa's demeanor to be very fetching. Um, she's just so into what she does. This is why she is who she is. Right, here we go. It's a nice back and forth to begin this first matchup between Alice and Tessa. Um, I thought to myself, Tessa must be so psyched to be wrestling again. Um, you know, it's been a while. It's been a while since Tessa Blanchard got into the ring. Tessa is another kind of performer, dude. She is so precise. The lariat that Alice hits on Tessa after being toyed with early into the matchup was excellent. She was trying to show that she could be on the echelon. This is already the best women's match in ages for XPW. No knock on anybody else. Honestly, Tessa is just on that level. The ladies always need to be snug like this. These two really were snug. I was really Impressive Big Al, she really held her own with somebody the likes of Tessa Blanchard. Um, this was just really good. It was a great finish to the match, great transitions before the finish. Um, I think that's the best women's match in XPW history, which is saying a lot considering my home girl, Camille, wrestled Deonna Perrazzo last year. Um, Tessa just gets it, man. She may be a complicated person. But that's what most geniuses are like. And I'm not saying this to blow smoke up a tush. A very nice tush, by the way. I'm saying it because people that are on that level, they're difficult people. A lot of people like that are very difficult. So she might have a reputation that precedes her, which is why she finds herself in XPW, because XPW give people with that reputation an opportunity to show what they can do. She has it. 
There's no fucking doubt about it. She is going to take Drake Younger's spot as the reliable, solid match on every show now that Drake is done. Great promo from Tessa. You feel the realism with the promo. Bro, she's challenging Luduck. Luduck comes out. Is it going to happen? Nope. She's holding off. She's playing mind games, baby. Ooh, I just got a new crush in Tessa Blanchard. Let's move forward. Um, XPW fans, in the comments, if you've heard through the grapevine where Juventu Guerrero is and why he has not returned, please let me know. Here comes Cat Martini interrupting Larry Legend. Uh, the body cut maker, he's got a staff infection. Um, so uh, honestly, nice work on the mic from from Cat. She, you know, it's it, she walked out there. She had dot points in the head. She didn't walk out there and memorized a fucking whole bunch of words. She had dot points, and that's what made it come across real. The hardcore hillbilly accepts the challenge that was supposed to be accepted by uh, the body. XBW Television Championship. Cat Martini defending against hardcore hillbilly goes. 32 seconds. <laughs> Hillbilly is the least cool guy ever, and it's brilliant. It's brilliant. He comes across so dumb, so stupid, and it works. Hillbilly gets squashed, which is amazing. He gets kicked in the dick, that Hillbilly dick. And then it gets a gusset plate board to the back, then some light tubes to the head, and then DDT'd. Boom. I hope for you, Hillbilly, that when you were taking that DDT, that your side of your head touched one of those impressive boobs of Cat Martini to make the pain of what you were going through feel less. <laughs> Mr. Fantastic out of the blue makes an entrance after Cat has beaten the Huggle Hillbilly. Um, I forgot the fact that he and Hard Body were supposed to be an item. This this came about months ago, and I don't know if it's been followed up on um, because I don't watch XPW TV because I don't have the time, um, like every other pay per view I review. Like someone just called me out today saying, hey, you need to watch the TV to get the um, context of what's going on with Impact Wrestling. So now I have to watch Impact Wrestling because I got called out on it. Someone call me out on this and I'll watch XPW TV, okay? Uh, he lays out the hillbilly, he humps the ring, and then Mr. Fantastic leaves his calling card in the ring, which is a black dildo. This is XPW. Um, and that was certainly a change of flavor. I always talk about flavors on the show. Different da, 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 da. things need to change throughout the show, right? Speaking of change, we're getting to a fucking death match right here, right now. And speaking of someone that really proved themselves on this show, Mr. Eric Dillinger, well done, my friend. You took on the one and only Lucky 13 in a match that went nine minutes, 33 seconds. Uh, Lucky 13 and uh, New Japan. Uh, New Japan, New Jersey mainstay for XPW. Lucky 13 is the opponent. I expected him to go over. Eric Dillinger got himself over straight away with those dives to the outside. He set up a door um, with a barbed wire board. Then there was this amazing tornado DDT onto the ring apron. This has been a hell of a show already. Lucky is on point tonight, bro. You could tell Lucky was on point. Dillinger gets a high, high, high back body drop over the top rope to the outside through what he set up, which was the table with the barbed wire board. Taking it like a fucking champion. Spinning blue thunder bomb from uh, Eric onto Lucky. Onto the tubes. That was excellent. It was so, um, how do I explain it? It was crisp. You nailed it, bro. Uh, frog splash onto tubes. Two count. This has been very good. This is an awesome. Sorry, excuse me. This is awesome chant takes place, which actually made sense at the time. Because yesterday I did a, a review of Impact Wrestling's Under Siege pay-per-view. 
And these lazy fucking fans in attendance were going, this is awesome. How is it awesome if you're saying it so monotone and you're like half asleep? These fans recognized something that was awesome and enchanted it when it was actually awesome. Thank you, XPW fans. Eric grabs a Cuban cigar off Larry's uh, coat and uh, lights it up whilst he's on the top row. But Lucky 13 grabs that cigar, puts it out on his chest, and then uh, puts him through some chairs uh, with tubes on them. And then he gives him the most fucking insane stomp to the head from the top rope onto a onto a chair that was that was um you know set up and his head was locked through this stomp was fucking brutal as fuck what a finish to the match good work boys you fucking nailed it let's move forward there's an intermission good work you gotta have those at xpw to set up the next match um XPW Women's Championship, Ludak Shatan taking on Becky Hate. I'm thinking to myself, is this the culmination of the ankle? Ankle? Remember, above the red wine deep, is this the culmination of the angle? Kurt Angle. Ankle. Angle. Chelsea Durden comes out. It becomes a three-way. Nice stuff with the unexpected shit. Well done, XPW. I like the unexpected stuff. Ludark swinging a chair very well because I complained about how the ladies were swinging the chairs recently because the chairs can be very heavy and the delivery can be a little bit clunky. But she swung the chair well. Chelsea was getting burked up. Even Becky Haight was swinging the chair well. Maybe you girls saw my review last time where I complained about the swinging of the chairs. Maybe you took my advice and you're like, you know what, California, you little fuck, you little sex, check check me out. Check me out, all right? You sexy little Australian fuck. I'm going to show you how to swing a chair, and I hope that that's the case. <laughs> Masada all of a sudden rocks up. He gets in the ring. He starts threatening the ladies. He saves Chelsea Durden. I thought it was strange, but let's just see where it goes. It goes back to one-on-one -on -one here with Becky Haight and Ludak Shatan. Uh, great suplex from the second rope onto tubes by Ludak. I think this was their best battle so far. They've had a few. Uh, Becky went through a door between the apron and the rail, like a, like a Batista spine buster by Ludark, except less sexy, because, I mean, let's be honest. Every time you see a Batista spine buster, that's pretty sexy, right? Um, I thought to myself, I wish I was at this show. I mean, I saw the ladies in attendance, and I thought to myself, there's a lot of good-looking girls um, in the crowd, but also on the show. <laughs> uh, props to the ref for counting. One, two. He's just, he's just counting in glass. Well done, mate. Well done. Uh, there's a sunset flip power bomb off the ropes by Becky Hate, which kind of comes across a little bit clunky. Uh, but these things are bound to happen. Uh, there's a problem with the referee making a count. He wasn't able to make a count because he was being realistic about it. No one's shoulders were down properly. The referee was actually doing a great job. Um. I thought that they were pivoting to, to try and find a proper finish at this point. Ludak hits a blockbuster style neckbreaker for the decisive win over Becky Hate, despite the fact that Kyle Wilde was like, hey, on, wait a minute. It looks like her shoulders are up. I thought Tessa Blanchard should have attacked after the match, but that's okay. That's just me nitpicking. Let's move forward. Uh, vignette with Kip Osborne. Um, Everybody Hurts was playing as he was very upset over the fact that he had uh, not been booked on this show, sending text messages to Rob Black. This is what I asked for. I asked for character stuff about Kit Osborne and XPW did it. I think the company's listening to me a little bit. I'm just, say just saying, I think the company might be listening to me sometimes when I make these reviews. Um. We go to Ron Neamey and Kyle Wilde, the White Claw boys. 
and you guys are showing off your white claws. You know, in Australia, we only get four flavors of white claw. We get pineapple, we get lime, we get not ruby grapefruit, that's gone now. Uh, we get uh, white claw, white claw, pineapple, lime, um, uh, not black cherry. They took black cherry away from us, which is the the best fucking one. Um, uh, there's mango, sorry, uh, and there's another one. Who gives a shit? But it annoys me because I know that America, you all got like fucking 16, 18, 20 flavors over there. We've got like four. We had ruby grapefruit. We had black cherry, and they're both gone now. Black cherry was the best. Anywho, let's move forward. Um, Kyle complained about glass in his eyes uh, during uh, Kit Osborne and Schlack for the King of the Death Match title here, which only went five minutes and nine seconds. Um, so this was definitely set up to be a punishment for Kit Osborne. Um, by the way, props to my boy, Hurt, not K, at ringside, popping for my boy, Schlack. Love you, bro. Um, although, where's the WZW Network sign? You know, we... <laughs> um, look, I assumed it was a title match. I found out during the match it was a title match. Um, early into the match, Slack hit this sweet driver onto Kit, onto Tubes, which was insane. Uh, this was Kit's punishment for being a bitch to Rob. I like the story. Slack is going to kill you, Chance. Very welcome. I heard a Jordan Grace is going to kill you chant yesterday. Nothing against her, but sometimes I hear a hook is going to kill you chant. I'm sorry. But if Schlack was to face Hook, Taz's son, in a match, then why would you chant fucking Hook is going to kill you when Schlack's fucking in there? That's someone who looks like they're going to fucking kill you, not fucking Hook. Nothing against him, but he looks like a fucking teenager. I think I might be able to fucking take him, to be perfectly honest with you. Take, take fucking one look at me. <laughs> Sorry, again, a bottle of red wine. <laughs> um, Schlack powerbobbing Kit onto tubes like he's nothing. Brilliant. Um, Kyle Wilde confirming my suspicions of this match. This is punishment for Kit Osborne. The super kick was excellent after Kit's comeback and Schlack sold it so well. Just into the chin and then he just fell. He just fell. I like that. Very well done, Schlack. I'm not going to give you any flack, Schlack. Because um, Schlack just lost his shit at one stage. <laughs> I don't know what that finish was. It was a bit weird. But he hit an elbow drop and he won the match. <laughs> and then Kit, Kit just got fucked up. Uh, Kit goes after a fan after the match who gets shoved and forced out by some dude at ring. I was like, what is going on here? And and from what I saw on Twitter, it seems like it was real, but my, maybe my homeboy, Ron Nini, can uh, uh, elaborate by messenger to me and let me know what the fuck happened there. Uh, Schlack came out. He laid Kit out again. Uh, and then he threw tubes at him. And dude, like earlier, I, I said that... um. Kyle Wild should have complained about um, he complained about glass in his eyes, and I said I would have popped if in thirty seconds time he says his white claw has been tainted too. But after this happened, Kyle was like complaining that his white claw was messed up now from glass. So that really made me laugh. But that whole thing felt so real, and I think maybe it was. Uh, coming up next, Lou Nixon has a promo in a pub. I like it. I thought to myself, he probably needs the win, considering he hasn't won yet in XPW. But this is uh, this is a situation for a lot of people. Chelsea Durden hasn't had a win yet. Uh, what's the big boy? The big the big boy with a big gut in LA. He's still fucking like five and uh, oh and five. Um, oh, can't remember his name. No, I can't remember his name. Anyway, it's Lou, it's Lou Nixon taking on Necro Butcher, which went 19 minutes, 57 seconds. Here comes Necro and the entrance. It's so fucking entertaining. Um, Jasmine St. Clair is with him. And Jasmine, look, you're my friend, but you are so delicious. 
And I know you like younger men, so um, if I ever come to LA sometime, maybe you might like to have a little rendezvous with California. There's no chance it's happening. Uh, MAGA um, gets out there and he hits an elbow drop on a, a picture of Joe Biden's head, which is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to ask for palate cleansers a lot with XPW, but sometimes bl bloodlust prevails. Bloodlust prevailed today. And it probably had help with uh, red wine that made the run in. Um, no, Dan no, Danny no Danny Ramirez here today. Uh, it's good to have the butcher back, though. Uh, Lou was trumping butcher with the train wrestling early. Train, train wrestling. Jesus Christ. Lou was trumping Butcher with the chain wrestling. No pun intended. Maybe Drake Younger could come back to just be a mouthpiece for the Mega Mega. Maybe. But that's okay if he can't, if he doesn't want to. If he doesn't want to be around it, you know, to to feel bad that he's had a broke back and um, can't wrestle anymore, then that's okay. But I think Drake can still be used in some way because he's so good on the microphone, he's so well spoken. And then maybe, who knows, in a year or so's time, maybe he might feel like he's able to get out there and have one more fucking match so he can end it on the right note. But no pressure from this fan right here. Drake, hey, I saw your um, retirement speech and all my love to you, my friend. You are a fucking gentleman. I don't care what anyone has to say. Drake Younger is the fucking man. Uh, there was a lot of a lot of time spent at ringside for this match. Uh, I really fucking love the light tube nunchucks. I'd never seen that before. That was really cool. Um, there was a ref bump. Uh, Lou locked in a sleeper hold, and um, uh, Maga Butcher tapped out. Um, but thanks to Jasmine and her help. Uh, Maga Butcher ended up getting the victory, which is probably what should have happened. Even though I thought to myself, yeah, Lou Dixon needs to win. He needs to fucking win. Anyway, let's get to our main event of the evening. XPW Heavyweight Championship on the line. My home boy, my boy, Masada, defending against the one and only Alex Cologne. Masada, bro, you know me. I know you. We talk every week. You have a sick theme song, bro. It just sets the table. It's like Schlack. When Schlack, when Schlack's theme song hits, it sets the table. And I understand that my uh, review has been very quick fire right here, right now, but it is 1.05 a.m. in the morning. So what of it? Um, it's about to go down. I love that, Larry. I love that. Um, and by the way, Alex Cologne, do my podcast, bro. Come on. You can spare an hour, 45 minutes. Let's do it, bro. Uh, and on that note, I'll have Kyle Wilde, Hardcore Hillbilly, Big F and Joe, Lou Nixon, Lucky 13, Tessa Blanchard plays, uh, Ludark Shatan, Sage Sin Supreme, a Supreme, Supreme, a.k.a. Becky Hate. Come on, gang, join me. I want all of y'all. And you know what, Rob Black? Join me too. Join me too. I've asked you like 10 times. Maybe 11th time is the charm. Uh, nobody delivers a slap like Masada. I challenge Masada and Stephanie McMahon to have a slap fight. Because she's known for her slaps, but Masada's a heard through the fucking city. Um, there was a, a comment by the commentators about they were possibly going to be stripping Masada of the title. Don't strip people of the title, please, ever. It would be bullshit. Um, I did like the psychology of Alex targeting the burnt areas of Masada's body of, uh, after what happened at the last show. Um, I uh, found out during this match that the problem with the NWA was that Billy had pulled Tom Latimer from the show. I don't know what the issue is, but are they getting too controversial? You can't handle them? Come on, XPW aren't that bad. 
to be honest, they're, 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 they're doing wrestling the way that I like it. They're fucking going balls to the wall, man. They're not fucking around. They're not pussies. Um, so uh, I love the uh, comments from uh, Ron Nini, uh, who had said, you know, we've got problems with the Smashing Pumpkins, you know, at least we're cool with Blind Melon. Whatever he said, I love the reference of Blind Melon, okay? <laughs> Uh, respect went out the door after Masada slapped the taste out of Cologne's mouth. I like that, Kyle. Good call. Um, and then at that point, Masada started brawling with Alex outside the building, and he was taking it to the street, taking it to the taking it to the streets. Um, unfortunately, we did not get a camera out there, but um, another comment from Ron Namey, he said, um. You know, he's just going at him like a surgeon. And I wish he said, like a surgeon, touched for the very first time. That's just a little thing that I thought I could add to that one. Um, but this got slowly but more violent as it wore on rubber. That table in the corner was a real pain in the ass, but I love that powerbomb through it. Um, and I really dug Masada's selling of the burned arm. I could not believe it though. Alex Cologne won the fucking title. He's only wrestled in XPW once before. He got this random title shot and he beat Masada for the belt. And I thought, holy shit. Then Alex cut a promo and he ripped Brett Lauderdale to shreds. I had no idea how bad things were at GCW. Things with them seem to continue to be swept under the rug. I don't know what's going on. Um, you know, I've heard what's his name, that fucking ugly dude. What's his name? He's so ugly. Uh, God, I can't remember his name. Bixen Span. Yeah, I heard he fucking likes to suck the dick of GCW and people in GCW who've done the wrong thing seems to, uh, they seem to get away with it because of him. David Bixen Span. Everyone thinks he's a fucking douche and he looks like a douche and he is a douche. Fuck you, dude. Um, but Alice Cologne's promo was fantastic. I like that shoot shit and um, the anti-GCW thing because I think GCW can meet me down there. Down where? Down there. <laughs> and at least it's nice to hear that people are getting paid bitch in XPW because you're getting paid in many ways by being there you get paid by wrestling a match you get paid by getting to look at Cat Martini and feast your eyes on beauty personified um, Jasmine St. Clair and uh, the hardcore hillbilly I'm drunk thank you so much everyone for joining me here on the WCWA Network for my review show of XPW's Beaten. <laughs> I've already forgotten the name of the show. <laughs> Broken, beat, and scarred. I was going to say uh, beaten, bruised, and scarred. How stupid is that? I don't give a shit. I'm California. I'm your homeboy, XPW. You'll love me. You'll love me. I'm always the one that's fair for you. I fucking love y'all. This was so much fun. And if I would just give it a rating out of 10, ooh, I'm giving it a nine out of 10. I gave a nine out of 10 for Night of Reckoning last year. I think this is on par with that. I had so much fun watching this show. Um, and if XPW could improve on anything, I want more hot women in scantily clad clothing. Whatever. I get a little bit of it, but I want more. So thank you all. For joining me here for my drunken review of Extreme Pro Wrestling's latest pay per view. I'm California. It's a joy to be with you all once again. And guess what? I'm going to see you down the fucking road. Thank you. Network, that's the way we blind. Get puppies. Don't play. Network, that's the way we blind. Get all of us has been paid for by the WZWA Network.